offshore fishing is no easy task, but when done safely and in numbers, it can be an experience of a lifetime. Always consider the conditions you're headed out in and how you want to get back. Not that it's said, let's see some action. There it is. Okay, we're not losing this one. No way. Dude, these kings have been playing games with me all morning. Pulling hooks and whatnot. I mean, come on. Not dang time, we got something. King. I think it is. Let's stay covered up, man. I've been getting burned up lately. There's always that feeling, you know, when you go offshore, especially from a kayak, you know, you paddle hours and hours and then when you finally get to those rigs and you hook up into your first king or whatever fish you hook up into, you know, just lets you know that uh, you're about to have a good day, you know, that makes your day totally worth it. Well, nobody told me that there was human-sized spiderwebs oh, offshore, man. you know, and somehow I ended up in a big one. Yeah. That's a good lesson to learn today. Don't uh, troll two rods at a oh, spot crap. that you know there's a bait ball around, and you're going to hook up two at a time just about every time you troll around. Don't do that. Dude, I totally got a mess here. Totally, 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 totally got a mess. Bottom by hand. Land this fish, man. I'm just hoping a shark ain't around because that would suck. Have a freaking bait dangling back there and have a shark come around. Oh, there's a king.
Right. I'm gonna end you real quick. I don't got time to be playing games. I gotta get another king off the line. First time I got, I had, first time I ever get two hookups at the same time. Usually I bring out the other rod, but they went down at the same time, and I had to cut one and tie it to my chair. So I got a kingfish back there, but he's stuck on my rudder. Kingfish, same thing as this one here. No, 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 yeah, just, just get that gas in, okay. and that fish will come right up to you. It's happening is a. Uh, Dragging the shark bait around. Getting away. Sprint. Let's get a clean look there. Took me three shots, but so. yeah. trying to keep my weights and stuff. Uh, you're good, you're good. Y'all want, y'all can have that fish. Yeah. I got plenty. Can I tell my wife I caught it? Let me just do my wife. Why don't we just tell the white line? That is just glam like that. Anything else? So, yeah. You can get the king. You got a fire for me? I'm gonna go ahead and let go that way. I don't bounce on you. Oh, okay. Yeah, I mean, I'm just saying, like, y'all can take the, the thing off and then y'all can hand me the stuff back. Oh, yeah, sure. Just unrig it. No, I had no, a line no. going like this and a line going the other direction. I saw that thing, so I could come in there when it got Yeah. How big are the other ones about the same size? Yeah, they're, they're, they're pretty small today. You want a water? No, I got, I got like five more in there. Oh. <laughs> Smart guy. Yeah. How often do you do this? Uh, when you, when you every time it's calm. Talk about the stinger. It's the, it's the treble hook that you have with it? Yeah, yeah. Like the way you saw this one here, I have the, the hook here and I have about probably about five inches of steel leader. Yeah. And it's all haywire twist, you know, with a, with a treble in the back. You have one hook with treble on it? Treble? Yeah. Hook, hook. And yeah. just a single hook to go through the nose. Okay. And then you can... If you're gonna be sitting still like how you anchored off, all you need is just to just drop it down like that. You don't even need the weight, but since I'm moving around yeah. to, to keep it down, I have to put a little weight, sliding weight on it. And that's how I get them. Same same thing, ribbon fish. Yeah. Do you put a whole one on it? Yeah. yeah. How do you how do you how do you put the how do you hook the um, here, I'm, I'll, I'll show you. Let me let me just tie this back up. I can go ahead and have this one. I think about it. I'm, I'm only allowed one more, so. Just see the way it is there? See how that's on there? Yeah. I can have it. And then you just drop it down. Yeah, just drop it down as, as, as the water moves it. I would say let just about 50 yards of line out. That's okay. good. That's good. Just wait, right? Yeah. yeah. And then, well, get my continuous. Do they still go after him or do they have to be wiggling around? No, they'll, they'll turn and move it. Okay. The easiest place to get them right now is there's a bait school. I don't know if y'all saw it, but it's right there where y'all were casting into. Yeah. Instead of casting into it, you want to get on the outside of it. The reason for that being is because the, the, the kings are on the outside pushing the bait in. So if you're in it, you're, you, you know what I'm saying? How far away? Uh, just literally in the edge. I mean, it's just, you know what I'm saying? Because you have to make the, the bait look unique to them. I mean, there's a thousand bait. Why, why would the fish want to grab your bait? You know what I'm saying? Right. So you got to make it look uh, yeah. different. Above it or below it, it doesn't matter. Huh? Above the loop or below it? I mean any, anywhere around it, as long as you're on the outside, you should you should get a bite.
after I broke my rod in half. That one? Yeah, I broke my rod in half. Damn it. I got another one the other rod too. Ah, shoot. It's breaking on my rod. <laughs> yeah. It's it's a king. Come here, oh my gosh. All right, I'm coming. Out. On my lure back, that's all I want. I'm free to go afterwards. All right. Alright people, there you go. It's a baby king. See it? See it? One rod trashed. Oh. Come on. Want to play? Oh, gosh, man. Broke a reel. 